Welcome to Artificial Intelligence in Education, AI for K-12, The Five Big Ideas in AI. This lecture will start out by providing a short overview and detailing the learning outcomes. I will then talk about the concepts of AI in education and the five big ideas in AI before coming to a close. The lecture details aspects of the five big ideas in artificial intelligence, those that are being introduced to learners from kindergarten to grade 12, and it looks at the more integral aspects of each and explores their implications for society. The learning outcomes are two, and they are that one, you will meet the five big ideas in AI, and two, you'll be able to comprehend the wider implications behind each of these ideas for society. AI in education. Until recently, AI was considered too advanced a subject for many, especially young learners, but this perception has changed. The AI for kindergarten to grade 12, is, or AI for K-12, is an initiative to develop US national guidelines covering what these learners should understand about AI and what they should be able to do with it. The guidelines cover four grade bands, kindergarten to grade two, grade three to grade five, grade six to grade eight, and grade nine to grade 12. And the guidelines are organized around five big ideas. The five big ideas in AI. The five big ideas in AI were inspired by computer science standards covering algorithms and programming, computing systems, data and analysis, impacts of computing, and networks and the internet. The ideas are a way to provide educational stakeholders, teachers, learners, and parents, with an understanding of the essential concepts and major issues of the field. Each big idea consists of a key phrase and one sentence statement, reflected in the five big ideas in AI Wheel, with grade band progression charts being released in stages. The five big ideas in AI are, one, perception. Computers perceive the world using sensors. 2. Representation and reasoning. Agents maintain representations of the world and use them for reasoning. 3. Learning. Computers can learn from data. 4. Natural interaction. Intelligent agents require many kinds of knowledge to interact naturally with humans. And 5. Societal impact. AI can impact society in both positive and negative ways. Grade progression charts. The grade progression charts illustrate the guidelines developed for each of the five big ideas by breaking them down into a series of concepts and skills that form rows of a table called a grade band progression chart. As development on each of the grade progression charts occurs, the public are able to comment upon them. A point of note here, is that the introduction to the five big ideas does not have to be sequential for learners, nor do modules have to focus on one idea exclusively, since a module might be able to cover aspects of all of them at once. And on screen, you can see links to uh, grade progression chart uh, one and three. And you can take a look at these in your own time. The five big ideas in AI wheel and poster. The five big ideas in AI Wheel, see figure 7.1, provides a short overview of all the ideas at a quick glance, using the key phrase for each and a one sentence statement as an associated explanation. These ideas are expanded with a one paragraph definition in the five big ideas in AI poster. And you can see that in figure 7.2. The poster is available in a number of languages, from English to Chinese, Hebrew, Korean, Spanish, Portuguese, and Turkish. The five big ideas. Now this section will explore the five big ideas in AI in more detail, and we're starting with big idea one, perception. Computer perception is sensor-based. Sensory signals allow AI to extract meaning from what is happening around them, Enabling machines to do this is one of the most significant achievements of AI. This insight into AI looks at perception, indicating that computers perceive the world using sensors and connects with computer science standards. For example, 
computer hardware or computer systems. The first uh, insight for learners here is to help them to determine that perception is more than sensing. A supermarket door might have a sensor and open for you, but there is no perception of what or who the door is opening for, and so not all devices exhibit intelligence. The question here then is, if the extraction of meaning from sensory signals requires knowledge, what does that knowledge look like? Take speech perception as an example. This would require knowledge of many levels of what constitutes language, which might include articulatory gestures, you know, using the tongue, lip, vocal tract movement, phonology, morphology, prosody, syntax, semantics, and so on. A second insight for learners is that perception can be seen as an abstraction pipeline where transformations of the signal to meaning is staged. In a language example, early speech recognition systems would implement a pipeline, a collection of distinct modules from a raw acoustic signal to that of phonemes, words, phrases, and meaning. Deep neural networks today utilize more processing stages and different types of knowledge across multiple levels. But there is still a local signal-based to more global meaning-based use of data moving through layers of such systems. Another example, that of visual perception, largely concerned with constructing a meaning, including that of reflection and occlusion. For vision, the abstraction pipeline starts with pixels and ends with three-dimensional scenes, with the in-between a complex mix of boundaries, contours, edges, objects, parts, shadows, surfaces, and reflection. Knowledge to derive representations from such a sketch is innate in human beings, but not easily articulated by computer systems. Keep in mind that the abstraction pipeline sees information flow backwards as well as forwards along it. That is to say that vocabulary knowledge can influence the perception of ambiguous sounds. Knowledge of object shapes can also influence the interpretation of edges in a scene. All told, human perception is far from fully understood, but the study of how AI mimics this process can offer new routes to appreciate and study our own routes of perception. Big idea two, representation and reasoning. AI agents maintain representations of the world around them and use this for reasoning. These representations are assembled using data structures with the representations supporting reasoning algorithms that derive new information from what is already known by the AI. The thinking process that occurs here is different to that of humans. In computer science, representations refer to data structures and algorithms perform reasoning. For humans, an easy way to understand representations of place is that of presenting a map, which is not about the territory, but an abstract way of representing details following notational conventions, for example, the ways that roads, buildings, tunnels, and nature is depicted. Utilizing a map to plan a route can be considered a line of reasoning. Self-driving cars have to be able to perform a similar kind of reasoning to get from point A to point B. Decision trees are also a good way to demonstrate reasoning, which is a simple formalism of knowledge encoding and being able to describe how such a process works is a way for learners to think about how reasoning algorithms perform. A key insight from this idea is that of interdependence of representation and reasoning, with representation pointless if having no way to implement it and reasoning algorithms requiring something to reason with. Using the map example, Map representation would require a path planning algorithm in order to determine a route from one location to another. Here, it is important to understand that representations are not just input for the algorithm, as they can also be constructed by the algorithm with the route constructed by the path planning algorithm, another representation. For example, gameplay programs would require a search tree AI representation one that keeps track of alternate moves as it searches for the move that will lead to winning any game. Search trees are neither input output, but are constructed by the search algorithm as it searches. The representation or reasoning duality can be expressed as representation drives reasoning and reasoning algorithms manipulate representations. 
A taxonomy of reasoning types could be introduced to learners to help understand these concepts and how AI makes decisions, such as classification and prediction, regression problems, and these can be approached symbolically. Combinational search, part of classical AI and still important, along with constraint satisfaction, logical dedication, numerical optimization, task planning, and theorem proving could also be introduced. For example, how AI uses logical inference could be introduced by examining how such systems deal with syllogisms like all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. Symbolic representation remain important, evidenced by the construction of knowledge graphs and the resources that large corporations such as Google utilize to develop them. For example, when conducting a Google search on a term, the knowledge panel displayed to the right in the browser window is generated from the Google knowledge graph. Feature vector representations are also important to understand, and computing technology introduces the term feature vector encoding, or word embedding, where each word is represented as a point in a high-dimensional abstract space. Turetsky and Gardner McCure provide an example based on the word to vec family of models in Mekalev. And you can see that represented in uh, figure 7.3. They state, suppose we want to represent the words man, woman, boy, girl, king, queen, prince, and princess. Imagine a three-dimensional space where the X coordinate encodes gender, the Y coordinate encodes age, and the z-coordinate encodes royalty. Each of our eight vocabulary words can be mapped to a unique point in this space. For example, man might be 010, and princess might be at location 101. Euclidean distance in this space can serve as a heuristic for semantic similarity, allowing us to infer that man is semantically closer to woman than to princess. We can go on to embed additional words in this space, even without adding more dimensions. Sun would likely be close to boy, although less definitive as to age, so perhaps its coordinates would be 0, 0 0.3, 0. Parent is gender neutral, but an adult with no implication of royalty, so it might map to 0, 0 0.5, 0, and so on. Larger vocabularies require higher dimensional feature spaces. Such spaces can be created by machine learning or neural networks using words that occur in similar contexts to infer information, such as meaning and predicting what words co-occur with given words like those adjectives that might apply to particular nouns. In this way, such systems are able to capture more than pure syntactic and semantic features from input. In a practical sense, statistical feature vector representations can be used in real-time speech recognition systems to disambiguate homophones, for example, when telling a chatbot that you would like to have two coffees not too hot to go. Systems using neural machine translation rely on feature vectors as input and output encodings, as do digital assistants such as Siri and machine translation systems like that of Google Translate. Big idea three, learning. Computers learn through data, and a large amount of data is required for this process to be successful. Training data is usually supplied by humans, but it can also be supplied by the machine itself. This big idea relates to the importance of understanding how human learning is different from machine learning. Human learning is general and flexible, being part of a larger cognitive architecture, with machine learning accomplished by specialized algorithms and specific task performance. As such, machine learning typically follows one of two approaches, finding patterns in data or optimizing a behavior based on trial and error processes. The process of machine learning is essentially the construction of a reasoner with machine learning allowing a computer to acquire behaviors without the explicit programming of those behaviors. In other words, 
humans program a learning algorithm which constructs a reasoner with desired behavior, with the reasoner employed to perform a task, for example, cat recognition among a set of images, or deciding if an email is spam or not. Such aspects of AI can be taught to learners by having them experience what it is to train a reasoner themselves, or to experience what it feels like to acquire a concept by finding patterns in data. One way to assist students in understanding such algorithms is to make use of images and labels with the teachable machine. A further concept relating to learning is that the learning of new behavior is established by changes in internal representations. Learning algorithms can adjust data structure, but this is not illustrated by a black box demonstration such as the teachable machine. Decision trees can help understand the concept as these are the internal representations that learning algorithms manipulate with glass box examples, drawing decision trees in real time able to demonstrate the process. For example, the Akinator decision tree algorithm. TensorFlow is also a way for a learner to experience changes in neural net representations as it allows students to train small feed forward neural networks and this is graphically displayed in a browser window. Connections are explicitly represented and are shown thicker or thinner as the magnitude of their weight increases or decreases with the sign of the weight determining its color. Other topics covered by Big Idea 3 are those of the design of feature sets, development and use of large data sets, sources and effects of bias in training data, reinforcement learning, finding patterns in data, as well as learning from experience. This includes finding patterns in data where data is labeled or unlabeled and used to produce classifiers and predictors. Supervised learning is where the algorithm is provided with the correct answer or a label for every training example provided to it. Reinforcement learning, unlabeled, is used for sequential decision-making problems that involve a series of action choices where each action affects the choice available in the next step and where the algorithm is not provided with the correct answer at each step, seeing learning from experience occur. Big idea four, natural interaction. Interacting with humans requires the ability to engage with humans in ways that they engage with others. This includes being able to converse in human languages, recognize facial expressions and emotions, and drawing on cultural and social conventions to infer intent from observable behavior. Today's AI systems can use human languages to a limited extent, but they lack general reasoning and conversational capabilities. The topics that this idea consists of are those of effective computing, common sense reasoning, consciousness or theory of mind, and natural language understanding. Natural language understanding. Making sense of human requests to intelligent agents, extracting information from texts, and conducting translation from one language to another are some of the processes involved with natural language understanding for artificial intelligence. Common sense reasoning. Knowledge about the world, for example, that a dog is a living being, that a bed is used for sleeping, including sociocultural knowledge, for example, appropriate gifts for a child's birthday party, are aspects of common sense reasoning that an artificial intelligence system needs to possess, along with naive physics. For example, understanding properties of solids and liquids and their behavior in response to external forces like gravity. And Winograd Schema. The Winograd Schema Challenge is a multiple choice test of machine intelligence put forth by Levesque that uses specific sentence structures that require an AI to provide resolution of anaphora. That is, the machine needs to identify the antecedent of an ambiguous pronoun in a statement. As such, the test is one of natural language processing, which Levesque argues requires use of knowledge alongside common sense reasoning. To achieve a level of human-like common sense reasoning requires artificial general intelligence which is different to the narrow AI reasoners that exist presently, but the field is constantly developing. Effective computing. Recognizing and dealing with human emotional states is effective computing. 
This includes those aspects such as tone of voice, facial expressions, body language, and the ability to effectively respond to indications of boredom, excitement, or frustration by adjusting interaction styles. Consciousness or theory of mind. Robots and artificial intelligences with a human-like persona do not really have minds, but in principle could have them, and means of considering such a concept is through examination of the Turing test in the Chinese room. To explore aspects of machine understanding of language, sentence diagramming may assist learners in comprehending how a natural language understander begins to fathom sentences. Sentence diagrams are somewhat akin to data structures, a fundamental computer science concept, and are a useful visual mapping process that aims to show the relationships between parts of a sentence. They can help you to gain understanding of how the parts of speech work together and where they are placed for a particular sentence, and can assist you in understanding how various parts of speech interact, may be interchangeable, and how they can be replaced, for example, passive to active voice. In the read colleague system of sentence diagramming, the functions of each word in a sentence are highlighted over that of traditional sentence word ordering, and you can see that in uh, figure 7.4. To start diagramming, you would draw a horizontal line, which is then divided by a short vertical line. The subject of the sentence is placed to the left of the dividing vertical line. Sentence modifiers, such as adjectives, articles, adverbs, are then placed on a diagonal line below what they modify, for example, noun or verb. The predicate of the sentence is placed to the right of the dividing line. Linking verbs would be placed to the left of it to connect the subject to the predicate and separated by a slanting line. Once again, any modifiers of the predicate are placed on a diagonal line below what it is they modify. In the dependency and constituency method of sentence diagramming, the sentence trees are used with every word in a sentence corresponding to one or more nodes in the diagram. See figures 7.5 and 7.6. Acronyms are used to label the nodes of a tree, for example, D equals determiner, N equals noun, NP equals noun phrase, S equals sentence, V equals verb, VP equals verb phrase. A hybrid dependency constituency sentence tree can also be diagrammed when rendering a sentence using this system. You can see that in figure 7.7. While syntactic analysis is an essential component of understanding language, it is only one part, and in order to understand a sentence, AI must first pass it. Figure 7.8 provides an example pass tree from the Berkeley Neural Parser for the question, Do androids dream of electric sheep? same question, broken down using a sentence tree, can be seen in figure 7.9. In these two figures, abbreviations stand for the following. SQ equals question, VBP equals non-third person singular present tense verb, NP equals noun phrase, period or full stop equals punctuation, NNS equals plural noun, VB equals base PP equals prepositional phrase, IN equals preposition, JJ equals adjective, and NN equals singular noun. It is here where we can utilize the power of AI to leverage statistical learning over large data sets to construct practically useful natural language for use in tasks such as text summarization or machine translation. It is a powerful approach but it presently falls short of understanding in a human sense. Big Idea 5. Societal Impact AI can lead to positive and negative social impact. AI technologies are already changing the way humans work, travel, communicate, and care for each other. Ethical design and deployment are important to prevent many of the negative implications that AI presents society. For example, biases in data can be potentially detrimental to some groups over others. Design can also have unintended consequences in the function of AI systems. Questions that this big idea also raises are, should we be polite to agents and robots? Should we teach children to be polite to agents and robots? The topics that this idea consists of are those relating to the positives and negatives of AI decision-making, 
ethics concerning people, the economic impact of AI, AI and how it relates to culture, and AI for social good. Attention here then is often placed on that of how to mitigate the negative impacts of AI and AI-related technology use. As such, a great deal of focus has resolved around the topic of bias in AI systems. Bias in AI systems can result from training systems on unrepresentative data sets and it is important to understand how to mitigate this and how such biases originate and propagate within the AI system in order to resolve them. Understanding how AI systems work and how to interact with them is also an aspect of life increasingly becoming important as we continue to incorporate such technologies into teaching and learning and into aspects of our daily lives. It is still early days in terms of AI education in the context of kindergarten to grade 12, and it is a dynamic area where change is occurring rapidly. There is no way to teach AI, but it is possible to teach the skills required for being able to develop, work, study, and live with it, just as it, like us, progresses. Workbook Activity 7.1 Consider the following two articles and then provide a short reflective response to these articles, taking the question posed into account. Articles 1. AI in education. Where is it now and what is the future? 2. China has started a grand experiment in AI education. Question 7.1. After reaching this point of the uh, content, what is your stance on AI in language learning and teaching? In this section of the content, you learned about the initiative to introduce learners from kindergarten to grade 12 to aspects of artificial intelligence, the concept of the AI wheel and poster, the five big ideas in AI and what they mean, and the potential implications of the five big ideas for society. I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to this lecture and I trust that you have found it interesting and worthwhile and have learned something in the process. Thank you.